Hello everybody and welcome to this video. In this video I will share the vision of decay of Beelzebub, a message from Beelzebub, plus um, how you can also work with Beelzebub. Now remember to take good note of the disclaimer that I show in front of each and every single video. Before you start doing any rituals, before you get into that, um, there are necessary steps that you do want to take. Now, let me first share with you the vision that Beelzebub shared with me before we getting into the more practical applications and implications. The vision of decay by Beelzebub. Now, Beelzebub is known as the Lord of the Flies, Storm God, Lord of the Celestial Plane, Lord of everything that flies. Many different translations, many different names, Beelzebub, Beelzebub, Beelzebub. Um, demonification of his name has taken place. He was known as a healing god. He was known as a fertility god. He was worshipped in the ancient city of Akron um, by the Philistines, right? So, very interesting historical connections. He is in, in many modern texts. He's in the Bible. He's uh, in the, the Testament of Solomon. Um, wherever you find him, and like number one, what you know is that he's very ancient, that his history, his uh, being goes back far, far, far uh, you know, in time. And his power is matching to that. His energy is matching to that. He does have different aspects, different masks, home, you know, people would call it. He also has different sigils, right? He's mentioned in different grimoires. Um, he has association to the spirits Baal and Baal. Um, and, but also, uh, as the Lord of the Flies, he has this uh, aspect of being a god of decay, right? Of, of death and um, of darker magic. And in, in this particular vision, in this particular ritual, where I worked with Beelzebub, he showed me a vision of decay, and this aspect was really coming through, the, 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 the god of decay, right, it was really coming through. So let me share with you. I went about my ritual, as I do always, and I will share a few tips and steps when you want to work with Beelzebub as well, uh, in, in the end of the video. Um, and I was transported, I was transported into a absolute dark realm, everything was pitch black. The only light that was being uh, sent was coming from the ground, and the ground was fully made up of skulls and bones and this perception how you can think about it how, how you feel it you're still aware of your body but if you've ever been in a very deep meditative trance where you experience kind of like a dream but you are still aware of your body kind of like a dream but it's, it's as real as a dream even more real because you can touch and feel but you are still you still have that awareness of your body. You still have that rest awareness of your body that slowly starts to fade away into the vision. That's the best way that I can describe it. And being in this realm, in this state, um, in my room, I was sitting on a beanbag, right? And a very tiny beanbag, like just a couple of centimeters high. And uh, I, I felt still my legs that I was, I was sitting on something. And as I looked down in my vision, I was sitting on a huge skull, was as big as my torso, roughly. And Belzebub was with me. Now, he wasn't with me in a classical sense, in a physical sense, or in an animal shape, or how many people subscri uh, uh, describe him. He was just there. He was laying his eyes on me. He was present, but not in a physical form. Not in the form of, I see you, right in front of my eyes, right? He was just there. It was his energy. His look, his eyes laid up on me. And um, in an instant, as he looked at me, my body decayed, just collapsed, fell together into dust and bones, was consumed by maggots. And he showed me and talked to me on a telepathic level. And it was a very psychedelic experience, right? This is how I can describe it in the best way possible. Um, he showed me that everything you think, that you feel, that you worry about, everything that you made up about yourself, your name, your associations, all of that, the whole concept of ego, that you attribute to your flesh suit is decaying in an instant and how insignificant on the grand spectrum and scheme of your own being your current worries or anxieties or troubles or thoughts or feelings are it's just a tiny tiny dot and fraction of your overall own being now that doesn't matter um no that doesn't mean that it's not valid or it's not important but it means that all of the judgment that you pass onto these experiences, which makes them hard or unpleasant or complicated or draining or horrible, are unnecessary and irrelevant because every experience is just that, an experience. And then it went hand in hand with the level of conscious level of perception he showed me. Because what happened after my body decayed, I still perceived, but in an absolute form, 
I perceived without a body, without a name, without a flesh suit. How he called it. It was just perception, just pure perceiving, pure conscious, which I personally think is much closer to our natural state of being. And this feeling was very powerful because there was no thought, there was no judgment, there was no body. But I still was. My being still existed. And it was almost like a psychedelic transcending the flesh experience. And the takeaway from that is that the ego, the flesh suit, is just accumulation of energy, thought, food, frequency, um, and a very, very tiny part of your overall being. And that if you take away judgment from your experiences, they just become that, just the experience. And how horrible or pleasant uh, many things may be, you have to understand that only through this filter of ego, they become this way. Only through this filter of duality, they become this way. Good, bad, hot, cold, light, dark. These dualities, they may be existing for us, for our flesh, for our own interpretation and judgment. But at the end of the day, you're just perceiving. The core that goes beyond the categorization and judging and um, categorizing situations and good or bad or whatever, this goes way beyond um, your ego, your flesh suit. And even if, if this, what you right now think is you, is, is not there anymore, um, it was just a tiny piece, a tiny fraction of your overall uh, being, of your overall experience that you are going to experience. And uh, this was a very, very powerful, uh, meaningful uh, message. It was very visual. Um, and at the end of the day, also uh, showed a lot of things to me. Because whatever, you know, if, if, you, if you reach a certain state of awareness and, and being and conscious, which, which these higher consciousness most likely constantly have, then you understand that everything is, is just very temporal on the, on, on the grand scheme of things, right? Now, I don't want to be too philosophical here. Um, the main takeaway from this vision that I wanted to share with you guys is that decay is natural and it's happening to everybody. You cannot stop it. The time uh, goes on for, in, in this particular realm, the way that we perceive it, you're decaying each and every single day. And the ego and the flesh look up very temporary. Life is just perception and it's really just that. And if you elevate yourself or try to elevate yourself beyond judgment, you step into a calmness, thoughtless, way of, of power. And this is what builds up a trail to me and this is what I want to share with you guys. Now, um, I also wanted to give you guys some tips when you are working with builds up because I do think that these beings have so much to share. And the first tip that I want to give you guys is when you work with the spirit, when you want to work with the spirit, the first step that needs to be made clear is preparatory immersion. You go in and you research and you don't stop. If this is important to you, you learn about the spirit, you learn about their uh, origin, you learn about their history. And why do you do that? Because you align yourself with the energy, you align yourself with the being, you prime your subconscious for the experience. This is one very, very important part that many people overlook. They, they look at a few videos, which is good, right? Look at all the videos. Also look at all the videos on my channel that I've about bits about. I, I summarize some of the information, but nonetheless, you can't just skip the queue when it comes to spirituality. You have to do, you have to do the work. You have to do it dedicatedly. You have to really want it. Um, and you know, this is the first part, preparatory immersion. I think this is what, what many people are missing and what may help you, um, whoever is listening to that, to next time when you conduct a ritual, maybe with Bilzebub, um, you know, that, that will help you. Uh, really take your time, do the research, learn, um, understand the origin, understand the energy. And, uh, and second of all, uh, when you conduct a ritual, have a clear intention. Don't just do something to do something. Don't just do it right and then see if the Lord of the Flies or the Lord of everything that flies or the God of the um, Celestial Plane or, or the, the healing God of Akron just shows up and says, here am I, I'm here to entertain you. Have a clear cut intention. What do you want out of this ritual? Is it Gnosis? Is it an experience? Is it maybe something physical? Is it maybe a change in the physical, um, you know, in the physical realm? Is it you know, money? Is it love? Is it protection? Is it, um, you know, justice? Wh whatever, it, like, what are you, what is your intent of conducting the ritual? So prepare yourself by immersing yourself into the spirit. Number two, have a clear cut intention for each and every single ritual, something that you do with a purpose. The ritual has to be conducted with a purpose. Um, and then number three, um, open your senses. Now, again, I think here it is important to have a little bit of a understanding that some people, and this is very often the case with, with uh, new practitioners, they, they do a right and it can work, it can work very well. 
but for others, nothing happens at all whatsoever. And I think that, you know, if you feel energy, if you're able to feel energy, if you're able to open your psychic senses, and if you're able to um, get into a deep state of trance where you can tell the difference between your own thoughts, right, that should be calmed, shut it down, and the gnosis that you're receiving, right, may be just audio, may be very visual, may it be both audio, visual, whatever, right, you need to be able to, to elevate into this state, right? You need to be able to really focus. And focus means that, there, that you're in a state of flow, in a state of trance, where, where nothing else is around other than what you're doing right now. Um, and this is also when it becomes easier to receive messages. But there are people who are successful with the rituals without having the ability to communicate. And this is something that you can build up. But if you're frustrated and, and, you, and nothing is happening, and you don't know why, maybe this is some, something that can help you, you know? Meditate, open your senses. Um, a practice, meditation, practice getting into these trans states. And um, I think this will help you a lot. Now, preparatory immersion, number one. Number two, intention. And number three, opening your psychic senses. Now, number four, let me tell you uh, something specific about some offerings um, that I'd like to give to Bilzbub. Now, I think one of the best offerings that you can give to Bilzbub if you work with this, with, with the Lord of the Lies, if you work with this deity, this mask, which will decide on the um, on the screen right now that I'm using um, is, is dead insects, uh, dead flies, um, dead insects that you find, uh, maggots, uh, dead bugs. Um, this is very very good. And, and what I like to do is I like to I don't kill animals, right? Uh, the fly or whatever, because I associate them with it. So um, very often what just happens is there. Whenever I start to work with a lot of the flies, my whole house starts to be full of flies, like just everywhere. And after a few days, they drop that, and I collect them. And I put them in a glass together with some yarrow. This is a um, herb that is associated with Beelzebub. And then I offer it on the altar, right? And I even had instances, uh, super droopy instances, where the, the flies started to fly into the fire of the candle during the ritual and basically sacrifice themselves on the altar. Um, so very interesting. Um, so this is a good offering that not many people talk about that um, I think is accurate, um, that you can just pick up. And, and when you prepare yourself a ritual and you see some dead insects lying around, you know, it may, it may be weird. Um, you pick them up and you collect them and, and you offer them. And uh, this is another step of uh, immersing yourself into this uh, into this being of decay, into this realm of decay, into this perception of decay, and, and having a physical representation of that. Um, yeah, the ancient gods have so much to offer. Uh, and this is just a very, very tiny fraction, a very, very small insight into, into what they can do. And I hope these four little tips also, um, you know, help you a little bit uh, for, with your rituals. If you want to work with the Bilzebub, remember to check out the other videos about Bilzebub that I have on this channel. And, um, you know, I summarize also my experience. And, and what I can say at the end of this video is that Bilzebub for me is a very close, very, very close uh, spirit. I have a very intimate uh, relationship with him. And um, he's, he's a great teacher. He's a great master. He's in, incredibly ancient, incredibly powerful. Um, he can show you a lot, and he's a lot of different aspects to explore. Um, he has a lot to offer. He has a lot to show you, to teach you, um, and you can learn a lot from him. And um, he can provide a lot for you, and he can change your life, no matter what. Uh, may it be health, may it be wealth, may it be whatever. Like, his power goes so far beyond um, the physical. But uh, what I've noticed is with the, these very high up spirits, they induce in yourself the ability to manifest and manipulate the energy in a way that you can cause these changes by yourself in an autonomous way. Yes, they help you whenever they can, right? Um, but they also, they, they make you more powerful. They make you more potent in your own uh, life and in your own way of, uh, you know, using your energy. Because what you can't forget is that um, you yourself also hold a lot of power. Um, even if you're conditioned to think that this is not the case. I really hope you enjoyed this video and uh, let me know if you want to know more of these experiences and, and visions. Um, I hope that the people that are meant to connect uh, find just another connection point to the girl of the flies, to the healing god, to the storm god, to Beelzebub through this video. I'm forever grateful um, for Beelzebub. And I will end this video with the final words of Heil Beelzebub, you Beelzebub, Salve Beelzebub. May your kingdom come, may your power arise.